All right. Thank you for coming on. How you doing? Good. How are you doing? Not too bad. You know, you're my first female fighter that I get to talk to, so I'm honored, okay. and you come very highly recommended. I interviewed Houston Alexander the other day, and, you know, he's got a lot of faith in you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, well, I'm honored to be the first female fighter, and, uh, yeah, Houston Alexander, he's an all right dude, I guess. No, he's, he's pretty <laughs> awesome, so uh, yeah. I, I always appreciate him recommending me. So before we get started with this, do you have any fight, like, upcoming fights, any news, anything that you'd like to plug, social media? Yeah, so you can find me on social media. It's probably the easiest way to find updates on my fighting, uh, Instagram at... L E N Grapp, E L L I A N N G R A P P. And uh, potentially fighting again in February, kind of waiting to, to hear um, if I've got a match or not. So, um, but that's, that's where I'll announce all of that on my social media. So, so how hard has it been? Because I know amateur fighting is like a headache as it is with people dropping out, people not wanting to take fights. But now you throw like that COVID curveball in there. Like, how has that been? <laughs> oh, man. Okay, so COVID kind of came at the right time for me, to be honest. So um, I started boxing like a few years ago and uh, had always just kind of like been waiting for a fight, waiting for a fight. You know, they said several different times that I would have a fight coming up and so I'd cut weight and then it fell so like you said with the amateur stuff it just does suck because until until you're in the ring uh with the other person like it's not a for sure thing um so i had i have a kid and um when i got back to start training um after giving birth was about when covid hit so it honestly gave me a little bit of a chance to like really get back in shape and stuff uh and start training pretty hard um and then by the time, like, late late this past year, 2020, was when I had my first couple fights. So uh, the timing worked out. It sucks, obviously. I mean, they canceled a lot of big shows um, that a lot of amateurs were kind of counting on. But it sounds like things are starting to kind of come back um, starting this spring. That's good. So, yeah. you know, let, let's start from the beginning, because every fighter has a different story, like what attracted them to the sport. Yeah. You know, somebody introduced them. Maybe they just watched Bruce Lee movies, something like that. So what is it that drove you to boxing over anything else? Yeah, no, my origin story is super boring. Uh, but um, I always say, like, I wish that somebody would have introduced me to this sport, like when I was younger, because I just I've always had that kind of fighting spirit. And so I think, man, I just can't imagine like where I would be at now had I been introduced to the sport at a younger age. But, you know, better late than never. I'm 26, so I still got a little little minute to, to prove myself. But back in, let's see, what year was it? 2017, 18 was when I, uh, I started, like basically just came to the realization like, dude, I need to get back in shape badly. And so I was part of a gym out in D.C. Uh, called Fit 360 D.C. So plug them if you're out, out in Washington, D.C. Um, but they had a boxing for fitness class like a lot of people do now. And um, that was when I kind of like started like getting into into that. And uh, just as I was doing it, I was like, oh, my God, like I love this. And the trainer was like, you know, you should actually try to compete. He was a, a more like Muay Thai jujitsu. Uh, so like more on the MMA side and was trying to get me to compete in that. And like at the time, like I was coming out of a knee injury and I was just like, nah, like I like boxing. I'm going to stay boxing. So um, did some work and training in DC, moved to Dallas. And that's really where I got like my foundations and like a ton of sparring experience down there um, under Coach Tony out of a Maple Ave boxing gym. Um, and then moved up here and had my had my kid and, and been going since then. Okay, well, I actually I graduated high school in um, Southern Maryland, so oh, okay. the the DMV for me it's you know very yeah. familiar. Absolutely. And boxing is no joke down there. Like there's some killers yeah. that come out of DC. Right, and I wish that I would have had more of a chance to get plugged in there. Um, but like like I said, I was kind of hanging around the like boxing for fitness uh, atmosphere there, but. But they definitely do. And especially on the like MMA side, they, they got a lot of killers coming out of there. Growing up, did you have any like role models that you would say you looked up to that kind of like piqued your interest in fighting? Um, really, the only people around me um, growing up that were anywhere remotely near that. Um, I had a relative. His name's Greg Boyer. He was like a Golden Gloves champ 
coming up. Um, uh, shout out to Greg. But uh, so I'd heard of boxing. I like, wasn't really anywhere close to it, though. My dad was a wrestler um, and would all, like we would always like kind of like, you know, in our family it would be like we'd be wrestling around and stuff. Uh, but my dad didn't want me to wrestle. I was a girl. So that just like none of those avenues are really open to me as a female coming up, it wasn't like an option or a consideration um, that was like presented to me. So I didn't really get um, any like inspiration to do it until later on in life. So I'm, I'm sure you get this all the time, but like, does that transition to MMA eventually, do you think it could happen? You know, yeah, I mean, listen, everything for the right price, <laughs> 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 you know, and that, honestly, that's why a lot of women you do see crossover from boxing to MMA, like Heather Hardy has done it, um, Amanda Serrano, uh, Clarissa Shields now is gonna do it. So there's a lot, a lot of women that like really get to the, to the top in boxing come to understand that like they have reached their maximum like dollar amount and it's not that much but MMA is taking care of the women so so they'll go over there and do their thing and you know respect to that like I have no problem thinking about potentially someday going over to MMA but I just personally love boxing and like I love the like the technique and, and all the stuff that comes with it the the culture around boxing I just love it so and it's, it's kind of weird if you think about it, you know, like MMA is relatively new when compared to boxing, but yet their women are kind of more like famous and like female boxers. Like right. what, what, what do you think is kind of keeping the, the women in like behind when it comes to compared to like MMA fighters? Um, I think a lot of people tend to think, you know, and this is across a lot of sports, but they think women are not as athletic. Women are not going to put on as good of a, performance or show are not going to be as impressive um whereas I think MMA that kind of culture has always kind of accepted like the um almost like the freak show element of fighting like that's kind of how it started out right is like ooh, who would win like a wrestler or a boxer mm -hmm. um and like pairing them up against each other now it's gotten a lot more like rounded out and technical but people on that side understand i think a lot better and have taken the the risks uh to put women up there and just see how it goes like kind of floating these fights and seeing what happens and women have proven that like they're gonna put on a show and like they really do like come out swinging and so i think mma has just really given women the shot to prove themselves that boxing hasn't done as much of like Boxing will say that, you know, like women are not as profitable or whatever, but you won't know that until you really give them the chance to show it. Right. So it's also like kind of like a promoter's fault that Absolutely. are like failing the women. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. That's where I would put it, honestly. Okay. So, you know, getting into the ring, it takes a lot of heart. It takes a lot of guts to do that. Like the first time you got in it and you had your first amateur fight, like, I don't think there's like a training that can like, you know, clear the nerves that can prepare you for that. How was that getting yeah. into that? What was your mental dialogue when you first, you know, ding, ding, and then time to go? Yeah, oh man. Um, so like I said, it has taken me a long time to get to my first fight. So I'd had tons of like sparring experience and, um, and you can get just as anxious for sparring, I feel like, um, as you can for, for some of these fights. Like, I guess I had that confidence coming into my first fight that like I was prepared and I knew it was my first fight. I knew it was this other girl's first fight. I was like, there's such a small chance that she has prepared as much for this as I have. And so that's kind of the mentality that I came into that fight with. So I was just excited because I felt like I had put in so much work to get to this point And like, I was finally going to have a chance to like, to, to actually do it. And so you know, the day of like, yeah, you got the nerves and stuff, but I think it, with all that sparring experience came the understanding, like the nerves that are happening are just like your body's way of preparing for doing what it needs to do. Um, so yeah, I, I mean, going into that first fight, I felt, I felt great. Um, and then I had that, my second fight came a month after that. And so I think for that one, I was like, oh shoot, like I, I didn't expect to be fighting again so soon. 
And uh, so going into that one, I think my head was like a, at a, in a little different place and like the nerves were definitely there. And I was, you were starting to feel like you have something to protect, like to show that you can do this again, like you can win again. Um, so I, I was definitely feeling more of the nerves there. And like when you get in the ring, uh, the dude pulls you to the center, says, you know, touch gloves, you go back, you're looking this girl in the eye across the ring and you're just like, <sighs> all right I got it like let's do it mm -hmm. so there's just all of that like just builds to that moment and then once the bell rings like you're just going like your body is just executing what you've trained so you know I love it it's a great experience but yeah it's a it's a lot leading into it okay so that is a, that's a good transition to my next next question because it's a little more personal yeah oh you know, I was raised by a single mother. I've had the luck, the luxury of living with my, uh, the person that I love for like the last eight years. Yeah. And I've had a lot of exposure to things like women's body that I, as a single man would have never had the idea yeah. or, you know, the, the mental capacity to understand, but I see it firsthand when, you know, things like cutting weight takes a toll on anybody's body. But how, what is that, that those stresses like, especially for you, you said you had a son, you know, like yeah. getting back to like peak shape or like, grinding through those moments when like you don't want to go to train you don't want to mm -hmm. get up you know in the mornings how, how how's all that yeah yeah so yeah a few things there like um being a mom and a single mom um like i'm blessed to to be in a co-parenting relationship where i have support from uh, his dad as well but it is still like it's a lot like the the sport demands every extra second that you have in the day and, and a little bit more a lot of times. So um, you definitely have to like have in your head, um, why are you doing this and, and understanding who you're doing it for. Like, I want my son to grow up and see uh, his mom is like this strong, badass woman that uh, he's proud of when he looks at me. Um, and so that's why I do it. Like, I, I know that um, he's looking up at me chasing my dreams um, and, and that will give him the strength to do the same thing. So, um, but cutting weight, I mean, no matter man, woman, whatever, it sucks. Um, and you have to have, I think the most discipline for that aspect of the sport. Like a lot of people that are boxing, like we love to train, like we're going to train whether or not we're boxers, but, um, <laughs> a lot of us still like our food. Mm -hmm. And so when you, when you get down to cutting weight, it's just, man, it, you that's when it comes to into like why are you doing this and you have to you really just have to be disciplined um I actually had to gain weight for both of my fights um so I just felt lucky like I was over here eating Oreos and and you know everything <laughs> leading up to my fight um and stepping on the scale with like a sweatshirt on so I was feeling good but uh, I've cut weight for sure many times in the past and um, you, you get the hang of like the you know what it is you know kind of how much weight like water your body carries and what you can cut in a few days versus what's gonna like what do you need to be working on like the month before um, but yeah I mean it's it, this sport requires a lot uh, male or female right and uh I mean, there are just are extra demands that, I mean, I think society has of women, like, especially when you're a mom and, and doing all this stuff, like, sometimes people can look at you like you're being selfish for, for chasing some of this stuff where they wouldn't think the same of a, a, a father. Um, so, you know, you just have to be, be confident in why you are doing what you're doing and, you know, to hell with what everybody else has to say about it. Absolutely. I've heard a lot of fighters say, you know, training is the hardest aspect of fighting. Like actually getting into the fight and just doing what you've done is is easy when you mm -hmm. compare it. Would you agree to that statement? Yeah, I mean, the for the physical aspect of like once you're in the ring fighting, like it's it's the same thing that you've been doing um for when you're training, when you're sparring, everything. Like your mind goes blank and you just you just do it. Uh, um the like psychological nerves and stuff going into it like that's another level but um man the training you just have to be disciplined and like whether or not you want to go like you just gotta do it you just gotta like like houston always says this too and i don't know if he said it to you but like half the battle is showing up and that's truly that is like so true like once you're there 
you just put the work in and that's all there is to it but but you have to be disciplined enough to make yourself show up so what is a day in training like for you when you're getting prepared for a fight or even if you don't have a fight coming up and you're just training what what's the day in the yeah. training like for you um so tra training usually consists of a couple hours a day of like uh you're doing uh warming up shadow boxing push-ups sit-ups uh then you go into like jumping rope um you're on the heavy bags working mitts with your coach um sparring a couple times a week um, and then outside of all of that like you're working on what you need to work on mentally uh, a lot of recovery is involved so like almost always like you've got something is hurting <laughs> right now it's like my, my mid back so i've been um, working on uh, recovering with all of that but you're working through all of that so um it's time consuming but um definitely like recovery is one of the more important things and and i think the thing that a lot of people skimp on um but if you want to if you want to like make it long <laughs> in this sport you got to focus on it uh, leading up to a fight, uh, you just have to be in super good cardio shape, like feel like you can go several rounds in a row and, and um, still feel fresh because when you get into the fight, all of the psychological nerves that like come into play, you feel tired going into, into the first round um, and, and you get tired more quickly. So when you're training leading up to a fight, you want to make sure like your body is in like top condition so that when, when you get there, any of that mental stuff that's draining you, you can still fall back on how strong your body is. You know, a lot of people who are ignorant to the combat sports, not just a specific sport in general, but combat sports as a whole, you know, they don't understand the different aspects that you guys have to go through, especially to like understand your own body, you know, when you're hurt. Mm -hmm nutrition wise stuff like that do you work with anybody that helps you understand yourself better to you know cut weight uh, yeah. and to get in shape better yeah so i would say houston i train with him a lot um houston alexander and he's been my like biggest advocate um coming up in fighting in omaha here um he is probably the person that has helped me best understand like your body has limits and you need to respect it because like when i was training down in texas and i think a lot of women in combat sport feel this pressure especially like you got to keep up with the guys like i had a rule when i was training down in texas like i would never give up on something before at least three of my guy teammates gave up so if we were doing sprints like i would wait till at least three dudes were like on the side vomiting before i let myself quit and um you know because you you have to gain that respect from people but what that ended up meaning was like I injured my calves and I, I kept pushing through that. And now to this day, I still have trouble when I'm running and stuff like it still hurts. Um, so I've definitely matured into the respect for like my body's limitations and kind of that slow and gradual climb um, and definitely have to, you know, give it up to Houston for that. He's, he's uh, forced me to slow down uh, some of the times that I, I have not wanted to. So. So let's talk about Houston real quick. How did you guys meet and how, how has he helped you in your career? Yeah, we honestly, we didn't meet through fighting at all, which is funny. Um, I work for the YMCA in Omaha um, and he was DJing for a, a Y event. Um, so we met that way and um, somebody's like, hey, you should talk to Houston. Cause at the time I was starting to think about getting back to training um, and Houston's a fighter and so, you know, I, I went up and introduced myself to Houston and uh, I was like, hey, I heard you're a fighter. Like, I don't really follow MMA, so I don't know. I didn't know who Houston was. Um, but uh, and Houston told me, like, no, no, I'm uh, I'm an ice skater. So that, that was my <laughs> intro to Houston. And that's been pretty uh, typical of the relationship past then. Right. But um, yeah, uh, I asked him basically, like, you know, what are some good gyms around here? I'm trying to get back into it. And uh, so I started training with him. Um, he has always done like community workouts um, here in Omaha. And so I worked out with that group to kind of start getting back in shape. Um, and, and he like has helped me make the connections that I needed to here in Omaha. So yeah, I owe him a lot. Yeah. So do you have like, 
like have it planned out or do you plan this with your coaches? How many fights you want to take as an amateur before turning pro? Like what's that path going to look like? Yeah, that's, that's a hard one. I mean, especially because like as a woman, like you're not just fights are not just getting lined up left and right to where you can kind of decide how much amateur experience you want. I know that I want to get more amateur experience. Um, my goal I think is at least like 10 fights in the amateurs. Um, and I just kind of hold that loosely just to kind of see how things are going because, you know, if I have what five fights, but I feel like I'm prepared to take on some of these girls that are pros shoot, like I'm going to take my shot because again, I'm 26. I don't have forever to do this, but, um, yeah, I don't want to be stupid about it and not, not get enough amateur experience to feel confident um going into the pro level but i'm going there at some point yeah okay yeah well wish you the best for that for sure so when you when you go when you go to the gym you know a lot of people also don't know like you guys box with men was it nerve-wracking in the beginning getting into it with another man or what was your mentality going into it um i i'm trying to remember how i felt about it right at first now i can tell you now like going into like sparring against dudes most of the time is easier than sparring women because they do try to like they they're not usually gonna let you have it at their 100 percent. so you're you're sparring against somebody who's holding back whereas when you spar against women like you're getting the full you know their full effort um so i would 100 percent say like my most difficult sparring sessions have been against other women Um, but there have been dudes that I've had to spar against and usually it's the ones with less experience that are harder to spar because again they have no control like um, the people that are super green are just like coming at you any type of way like they don't care that you're a girl Mm -hmm. so those are the ones that are hard to spar but are good experience because as dudes they're strong and are coming at you with the same intensity as like a girl will be coming at you in the fight. So it's good experience all, all the way around. Like any kind of person that you get to spar, um, you can count it as good experience. So earlier you touched on the fact that some people look at you in a negative aspect, you know, that you're being selfish, that you're not thinking about your kid. What are some of those misconceptions that, you know, people don't understand? It's a hard sport for people that don't, um, that aren't involved or don't have that kind of like fighting spirit to understand why you do it. Because I mean, when you look at it rationally, it doesn't make sense. You're, you're going into something, getting hit in the head and vital organs multiple times. Um, you have a kid. So why are you risking your health? Why are you um, devoting as much time to this as you are when you have a kid? Um, and even, even if you don't have a kid, when you have like other career aspirations and stuff and you're you're doing this on the side, like, what's the point? And I mean, honestly, the point is like, cause you love the thing, like, cause you're passionate about it. And, um, to, to not do something that you're passionate about would make you a lesser person. I think, um, if you're not going to pursue what you love, like, what are you doing? Like you're, you're going to be like kind of a shell of who you actually are. So I've tried to give up boxing like I I thought when I when I got pregnant I was like I'm probably not gonna get back to this like it's it doesn't make sense I'm gonna be a mom I'm gonna be busy with all this like I don't need to be risking my health when I have a kid um but when you can't stay away from it you can't stay away from it so um yeah I, I guess I would just say like to anybody listening like if you have that thing that you're passionate about even whether or not it makes sense. Like you owe it to yourself um, to pursue it and, and to give it your full effort um, because that, that's what's going to inspire the people that are in your life and the people that you love. So Fighting in general can be done, how do I put this, like kids that might do it might take it in the wrong aspect and like go from fighting in a gym to fighting in the streets. What would you tell anybody that wants to get into it? Do you think it's important to do it for self-defense? No, I mean, I think, okay, so what I see more often is people that fight on the streets that come into a gym and think, I fight on the streets, I'm going to be just fine in here, like, uh, and then they get their ass handed to them, Um, but 
I don't see a lot the other way around where somebody gets trained and they become good at fighting and then they go out and like use it recklessly. You don't see a lot of that. And I think because all combat like takes so much self-discipline um, and control of yourself, of your emotions um, to be able to do it well, that you don't learn that and then go take it to the streets and like just start whooping ass. Like that just doesn't work like that. Um, so yeah, no, I don't, I don't see a lot of people that just like use it incorrectly. And I don't think, I don't think it's necessary just to learn combat for self-defense. I think that's a good enough reason on its own, but like I was saying, like it develops a lot of discipline, um, over your, your physical body, but also like your mental state as well. How have you strengthened your mental state? Like, do you do things like meditation? Do you read? Mm, I like yoga. And again, like, it's it's this lesson of, like, teaching yourself your own limits and, uh, and being able to um, focus, focus your mental state. Because there's a lot of stuff that plays into your mental health in general. And um, all of that stuff will show up in the ring too so if you have a chaotic and stressful life outside of boxing it's going to mess with your performance and that's any sport like or any like thing that you're committed to doing like if you have too much noise going on on the outside it will start to affect um, your success so it's just a lesson on um, achieving peace in your life and uh, however that works for you whether it's doing yoga, meditating or whatever, but um, also I think just the, the um, commitment to protecting your own peace. Yeah, I mean, so finding that balance, you know, with all your life responsibilities from being a mom, you know, bills, work, all the things that you have to do. So it, it, it helps to have that balance with everything. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And you, I mean, everybody always reaches like, what their boiling point is and, and how are you going to handle things when you get to that, that point. Um, that's, that's what determines whether you're going to be successful. I think. Do you have a support system that like you, I guess you could say like you go to when things are getting rough, not just in training, but in life in general, because some people don't have support from anybody and they're just yeah. doing it by themselves. Yeah, no, I, I am not afraid to admit I go to therapy. I love my therapist. Like that, that I mean, I think anybody should go to therapy, like, you know, 100%. But I also um, have relationships in my life with people that, that know me and that can, like, kind of call me out on my bullshit and, and set me back on the right path. So those people in your life that you trust um, that really do know you, I think those are the people that are important um, to keep around um, because you know you're going to go through some hard things, whether it's boxing or anything else. You have to have those people in your life that you know 100% um, are going to be there for you. Well, you know, I, I think I've, I've kept you around for long enough. Uh, do you have a message for anybody that, like, you know, is looking to get into boxing, get into combat sports, any anything athletic in general? Um, I would say do it because um, there's going to be – I, I am no stranger to like self doubt and you feel like maybe you don't have what it takes to, to do this thing. But I, I guarantee you the people that are doing it successfully have thought that before too. So um, I would say if you're, if you're thinking about getting into boxing or, or anything else, like give yourself, um, you know, a pass to try it, uh, to, to give it your full effort and, and just see how it goes, you know, like, if it's a failed effort, whatever, like that's a new experience that you added to your life. So. And I'll leave it with what uh, Houston Alexander told me. Fuck the haters. Absolutely. So. <laughs> Fuck the haters. <laughs> I appreciate it very much. I wish you the best luck with everything. I hope, you know, this COVID stuff blows over so you guys can, you know, start getting them fights. I hope them promoters, okay. you know, get their head on, you know, out of their ass because yes. some of the greatest fights I've seen have come from women. And yeah. to say that women don't put on good fights, man, that's, not just a bullshit statement, but clearly it shows that they don't understand fighting at all. I uh, hate you couldn't say it better myself. So yeah, I appreciate being on though with, it, with you and uh, uh, thank you and hope y'all have a good rest of your day.